You know, it's interesting. Rasmussen reports came out with a poll today saying that 50% of likely U.S. voters approve of President Trump's job performance. So it basically has a 50% approval rating. That contradicts with the poll released by Gallup yesterday, which said that only 37% of Americans supported Trump, that he only had a 37% approval rating. The question is, who is Gallup sampling? Who are they asking to get this result, given the wide margin of difference between the Gallup poll and the Rasmussen poll, a 13% difference. Well, I asked Gallup to provide their sampling. They've got a website where it says, contact Gallup if you want further information on the sampling for our polls. So I did that via email, via Twitter, 28 hours ago now. No response, nothing whatsoever. I was simply asking, give me information on the sampling for your poll. How many Democrats did you ask? How many independents did you ask? How many Republicans did you ask? Because, of course, before the election, and this was one of the reasons why people were so shocked that Huffington Post could report Hillary Clinton 98% chance of winning the election and then for her to lose, of course, the polls before the election oversampled Democrats in almost every case. You could look at the polls for the debates and the immediate aftermath of the debates, the CNN ORC polls always oversampled Democrats because, of course, that makes it more likely to get the result they want. So only 37% approval rating for Trump, according to this Gallup poll. Who are they sampling? Who are they asking? Well, I asked them, and they have completely failed to provide an answer. More than 24 hours later, unacceptable, which, of course, suggests that they're hiding something. They don't even put it on their website. How simple would it be to say, this poll sampled X percent of Democrats, X percent of independents, X percent of Republicans. They don't do that. And when you ask them about it, they don't respond. Very suspicious. If this is a fair poll, give us the sampling and we'll move on. But they haven't done that more than 24 hours later. Very interesting indeed. We have a top story up on Infowars.com. I posted this about an hour ago. Study. One third of young Muslims in France think terrorism is acceptable. Oh, religion of peace strikes again. So basically, they had this big study conducted immediately after the Paris attacks in 2015, November 13 attacks. They asked almost 7,000 high school students in France, 25% of whom were Muslims, they asked them a bunch of different questions. And what did they discover? They discovered, and bearing in mind this study has been received very badly by the French media because it's, quote, not politically correct. It literally says that in one of the articles that we have to be very careful about the results of this study because the facts are not politically correct. Well, the facts are the facts are the facts, and these are the facts. According to this study, a young Muslim is four times more likely to adhere to radical beliefs than a Christian. 33% of Muslim students in this poll consider it acceptable, that's a quote, acceptable to, quote, participate in violent actions for ideas. Which is obviously terrorism. Violence in pursuit of political goals is terrorism. That's the very definition of terrorism. 33% of young Muslims asked in this survey said they found that acceptable. 20% of Muslim students agreed with the statement that it was acceptable to stand up for your religion with weapons. And again, bear in mind, these are the ones who just admit to it. If you have 33% of Muslim students saying that they're sympathetic with terrorism, using violence to further your ideological goals, how many of them didn't admit to that, but believed it anyway? You know, we had a poll in the UK a few months back. 52% of Muslims living in the UK think homosexuality should be criminalized. They think gay people should be thrown in cages. But again, 52%, a majority, but how many of them didn't admit to it? After all, the Quran says that you can lie to infidels, so how many more believe it but don't admit to it? But even the ones that do admit to it, those numbers are shocking enough. 24% of those surveyed in this study, out of the whole sample, 
Bearing in mind only 25% of this sample are Muslims, the other 75% on, but still 24% of those surveyed refused to fully condemn the Charlie Hebdo killings. 24% of young people in this poll of almost 7,000 students in France. And again, that's the whole sample. That's not just amongst Muslims, and yet you've still got a number of 24% refusing to fully condemn the massacre of the Charlie Hebdo cartoonists. Bataclan massacre, which of course happened during the November 13 Paris attack. Absolutely horrific incident, 89 people dead. 21% of students surveyed in this poll refused to fully condemn the Bataclan massacre. Again, that is the whole survey. If you broke it down, which they didn't, conveniently enough, because we can't break it down too much, can we? Because again, that's not politically correct to know the truth. But if you broke it down, if you only took the Muslim students out of that poll, that number would, of course, be way higher. Now, we've seen this kind of thing before, but this just emphasizes it once again. Of course, we had the Pew Global Attitude Study in 2006, which found that 42% of Muslims in France aged between 18 and 29, so young Muslims living in France, 42% of them thought that suicide bombings were sometimes justified. So you've got almost half of young Muslims in France who think that under certain circumstances, suicide bombings are justified. And these opinions are echoed across Europe. They're even worse when you look at attitudes in the Middle East. Islam is not a religion of peace. We've proven it again and again and again. How did Le Monde react to this survey, the left-wing French newspaper? Well, they attacked the researchers for stating the facts. They said that it was like opening Pandora's box, because God forbid we would learn the truth. And in these articles, which are in French, they were translated by the West Monster website. They basically say we have to withhold the full results of this study. We can't break it down too much. We have to delay the release of this further until after the election, the first round of which takes place in about a month's time. And of course, Marine Le Pen is the anti-immigration candidate. They don't want this to benefit her. So they're talking about delaying the release of the full results. Censorship. Because again, as one of the journalists remarks, these results are not politically correct. We don't want the public to know the full scope of what is happening in France, where on an almost daily basis, there is some kind of terrorist incident now. A few days ago, we had a son and a, his, a father and his son having their throat slashed in the street in a, quote, trendy area of Paris. We had the incident a few days ago at the airport, second biggest airport in Paris. Again, jihadist tries to grab a soldier's gun, tries to go on a rampage, luckily shot dead before he could do any damage. We have some kind of incident almost every single day in France. We've had 20 jihadist attacks in France since January 2015 alone, since Charlie Hebdo. 20 jihadist attacks in France alone. And is it any surprise, given these attitudes amongst young Muslims, most of whom were born in France? They're not even new immigrants. These are the supposedly integrated ones. This is the cultural enrichment that is taking place in Europe. It's absolutely chilling. Of course, what they're afraid of is the fact that, as I mentioned earlier, Marine Le Pen has 39% support amongst 18 to 24-year-old French voters in France. 39%, that's almost double her nearest rival, Macron, who is leading in the polls, but Le Pen has almost double the support amongst young people. And again, it's because the major parties have completely neglected young people. They only have support now amongst older people who are just desperate to keep their pensions and think that Le Pen is going to take away their pensions. But again, that emphasizes populism is the new counterculture. Increasingly, we're capturing the youth vote. Every other message I get is from somebody aged 15, 16, 17. 
it's really encouraging to see that, and it's encouraging to see it in France. But is it really any surprise, given these horrific numbers that we see in this poll, with young Muslims thinking that a third of them thinking that terrorism under cer certain circumstances is acceptable. Absolutely chilling. Meanwhile, over in Sweden, my favorite country, last night in Sweden, Sweden has let in about 150 ISIS terrorists. Of course, it's routinely in the top three for exporting terrorists to Syria and Iraq to fight for ISIS. They let them back in because they're liberal, because they're tolerant, they're progressive. In many cases, in some cases, in some cities, the Swedes are offering returning ISIS fighters jobs, homes, welfare payments. Yeah, that's not fake news. That's been reported over and over again. They're actually offering Islamic State fighters welfare. Not even, can, should we turn them away at the border? They've beheaded people. Should we just let them back in? Yeah, just let them in. We're tolerant. We're progressive. Now they set up a hotline. They didn't say, let's turn them away. Let's not let these bloodthirsty jihadist killers back into our supposedly liberal country. No, that wasn't even up for consideration. They just let them back in, but they set up a terrorist hotline so people who saw something suspicious could call in and report one of these ISIS terrorists, which the government had let back into the country. Then they shut down the terrorist hotline because they thought it might be encouraging racism. That's what's happening in Sweden today. Absolutely insane. Meanwhile, their government is reopening Cold War bunkers over fears of Russian invasion. Shelters on the Baltic island of Gotland will be prioritized for comprehensive checks after it was identified as a likely target for Russian invasion last year. Sweden's most populous island has been the site of a dra dramatic buildup of military training more than a decade after being demilitarized. So they're reopening hundreds of Cold War bunkers on this island. This is the target, supposedly, they claim, of Russian invasion plans. They spent $9 billion during the Cold War to build nuclear bunkers, so they've got enough to shelter 80% of the population. But they've got a problem because they're letting in so many foreign immigrants that let more and more people are not going to be protected in the very worst case scenario. So now they're having to go through all these checks, reopen these bunkers. The Swedish Civil Contingencies Agency says that the uh, country's municipalities need to prepare for war. They've brought back compulsory military service for young people. They're short of soldiers. They're basically freaking out. But they're not freaking out about the fact that they're just letting ISIS jihadists back into the country. The fact that areas of Stockholm and Malmo are on fire every night. They have riots all the time. Murders are going through the roof. They've got the highest rape rate in Europe. No, that's not what they're concerned about. They're concerned about Russia invading them. That's what's going on in Sweden. While the mainstream media still pretends that it's all hunky-dory, it's a liberal par paradise. Meanwhile, in Holland, where they just had the election, this is out of westmonster.com, Dutch, election, Dutch education ministry teach migrant kids in foreign language. So they've just given up on the integration altogether now. In an example of staggering stupidity, the Dutch education ministry has recommended to primary schools that they teach the children of asylum seekers and migrants using the language of where they came rather than just teaching them Dutch. So they've basically given up on integrating them and say, yeah, we'll just teach them in Arabic. We'll just turn over our entire society. In Sweden, they're now creating glossaries for new workers on construction sites where every single term is translated into Arabic. Again, the onus should be on them to learn Swedish and Dutch, not on the entire society of Holland and Sweden to change to become Arabic. But that's what happens when you just allow people in, they congregate into ghettos, they radicalize, they create more terrorism, they create more sexual assaults. They're responsible for more crime. That's what's happening in Europe. And now in Holland, they've just given up altogether on integrating people by trying to teach them Dutch. Now they're just going to teach them in Arabic. 
This is up on Infowars.com. Globalist will force EU to accept more Muslim migrants. The European Union's Immigration Commissioner says the bloc has the tools, the means, and the power to force EU member states to accept Muslim migrants. Dimitris Avramopoulos, Greece's commissioner for the EU's common immigration and asylum policy, made the comments during a visit to Poland. So they're basically threatening European countries with economic penalties if they don't accept more migrants, even as Erdogan in Turkey over and over again threatens to use the migrant wave as a weapon against European countries if they don't give him more money, if they don't allow him to campaign politically in Europe, as we saw a couple of weeks ago with the Islamists rioting on the streets of Rotterdam and Amsterdam chanting Allah Akbar. But again, that's key. Note how Erdogan characterizes the migrants, not as desperate suffering refugees, but as a weapon to be used against the West. And he's done that over and over again. And you've got to, hand, you've got to put your hands up to him. I mean, at least he's being honest, right? given what we've seen happening in Europe. So that's what we've got happening in Holland, in the Netherlands. Now we have top globalists saying, you better start accepting more, or we're going to hit you with more financial penalties. Big Bang Theory star confronts leftists for ignoring Islam's abuse of women. This is like seeing a unicorn. An actor, an actual actor, has spoken out on left-wing hypocrisy when it comes to Islam. This is the Big Bang Theory star Mayim Bialik, who is making headlines for calling out Linda Sarsour, a Palestinian activist and Sharia law proponent, over her comments on feminism. And you can go and read the quotes there. So an actual actor in Hollywood is calling out leftist hypocrisy on Islam. Absolute bombshell story. You won't see that again for a while. 1,500 acid attacks have been recorded in London since 2011. We're going to get more into that after the break. Wait until you find out what the top areas are in London that have experienced this skyrocketing spate of acid attacks. few final stories here. BBC reports historical dramas limit UK black actors. This, again, is another one of those things where they have to filter everything through the lens of social justice. Actress... Sandy Newton has said she can't work in the UK because there are no roles for black and minority ethnic actors in historical dramas. London-born Newton said the number of costume dramas had led to slim pickings for people of colour. Her criticism comes after the British Film Institute research found that 59% of UK films since 2006 had no black actors in any role. Well, the problem with not including black actors in historical dramas is if you did include black actors in historical dramas set in England 200 years ago, they would cease to be historical. That's the frigging point. If you want it to be historically accurate, you have to accurately represent the people who were living in England, for example, in the 1800s. Very few black people were living in England in the, in the 1800s. So obviously, there aren't going to be a large number of roles for black actors. It's like if you were doing a production about Nigeria in the 1920s and you were complaining about there not being enough white people in the production. Well, of course, there's not going to be white people in it. It's in Nigeria. Even if it was set in Nigeria now, there'd be no white people in it. That's the reason. It's got nothing to do with racism. But again, everything in the arts, everything in theater, everything in cinema, has to be filtered through this lens of social justice. They're making everything crappy. In fact, I've got another video coming out on modern art, which will probably be out tomorrow, which covers that very issue. A couple of stories left. CBS San Francisco reports tattoo removal business booming as fears of deportation mount. An East Bay tattoo removal clinic says they've treated a record number of clients since the election. Some in the Latino community worry ICE agents will use their tattoos as an excuse to stop them and check immigration status. So, of course, we know that many of these illegal immigrants have gang tattoos. Now they're getting them all removed because they think ICE is going to stop them, use that as an excuse to basically deport them. That is a reflection of what's happening as Donald Trump continues to build the wall. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of The Alex Jones Show. But again. 
Get the article out up on Infowars.com why the FBI's Infowars Russia investigation is completely ludicrous. We're being accused of something that Twitter, Facebook, and Google have done on a regular basis. They're the ones manipulating public opinion. This is a ruse to censor Infowars, so we really need your support. That's going to wrap it up. Breaking news at Infowars.com.